When I heard about this, I thought, how do we not know more about this? Up to 10,000 Canadians could be affected by this disease. And if it's treated, you can live a relatively normal, nice life. If it's not treated, it could be fatal. It's called pulmonary arterial hypertension. And joining us now is Judith Moati. She is a young mother who lives with this disease. Hi, Judith. Hi, Natasha. How are you? I'm good, you? I'm good. I'm good. So so tell us a little bit more about pulmonary arterial hypertension. Okay, well, basically it's a disease that um, that affects uh, your your lungs, arteries. Um, in some cases, it, be, it could be caused by blood clots. In my case, it was caught caused by a high blood pressure going up in the lungs itself. Um, therefore, it was harder for the right side of my heart to function and um, have a, the blood flow circulate properly. Um, and therefore, it could cause fainting. Um, you can have shortness of breath. Uh, you start having blue lips because the blood is not flowing properly. Um, and it's hard to get a diagnosis because shortness of breath is a symptom that is one of the main symptoms to look at and unfortunately a lot of people will think just like I did like I I started a new job I'm not going to the gym anymore so therefore it's normal I'm short of breath and you just go on with your life but unfortunately I started fainting after a while and so I went to see my uh, family doctor Mm -hmm. who um, did an electrocardiogram and told me look it might be a certain condition called vasovagal. Um, so if you feel faint, just sit down and lift your legs up. I have and that I condition. I, really? I, yeah, I have oh. that. I have vasovagal. I've, I, that's so interesting. Keep going. Yeah, so, so that's what I thought I had. But then a few months later, I was at work and my gallbladder was swept up. I was very pale. I couldn't walk. I couldn't breathe properly. So I landed in an emergency. Oh, um, they thought it was a problem with my gallbladder. Um, and it's only after a lot of tests, and it was by fluke that I got my diagnosis because um, they were about to release me. They didn't find anything. They thought I had a stone, and it passed. Um, but then I was in a doctor's room, and there was a poster on the wall describing all the symptoms for pulmonary hypertension. And the person with me that day said, you should check her for that because she has a hard time walking and she's young and she's not heavyweight so yeah it's not normal for her to faint after walking up a flight of stairs so um the doctor said okay we'll do a chest x-ray how uh, random is that though how random is it was so random it was scary to be honest it was very scary i didn't think anything of it and um and then we did a chest x-ray which came back showing my arteries were smaller but the doctor still said but it could be nothing So they sent me for an ultrasound of the heart where they noticed that then my heart was in heart failure. I had heart failure and um, Mm. I had maybe two years left to live and I was only 25 at the time. I only noticed something was wrong when I I started with a tech and then all of a sudden he left and came back with 15 doctors and all of a sudden somebody tells me, well, your heart is enlarged. It's swelled up right now and it's very dangerous. So... Um, they then later on proceeded in telling me that I had pulmonary hypertension and they were going to send me to the Jewish hospital to be followed by Dr. Langleben, who is a a cardiologist specialist uh, in this condition. And so as soon as I met him, um, he told me, okay, well, we'll try one pill. And if it doesn't work, there are two pumps, which are machines. Um, One is subcutaneous. The other one is uh, 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 you get a while you're put into your vein, into your heart, and you're plugged to a machine 24-7, basically. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there wasn't much at the time when I got sick. So we went on with the pill. It didn't work out. He said, if I have to put you on the smaller machine, which is like an insulin machine, um, but the medication re- that we were receiving was 24-7. Um, it's very strong and it hurts. It's very painful. Wow. Yeah, and so that saved my life that day when... I started that medication, um, but I developed an intolerance to it with the pain. I couldn't wear clothes because the sight pain was 
to- too heavy for me. I couldn't walk. Because you couldn't wear pain. clothes because you couldn't stand the no. feeling of it touching your skin? Exactly. It was that painful. Judith, you were 25 when uh, when this was discovered. Were you a mom then? Yes, actually. My son was only five years old at the time. Wow. So it was very... Uh, it- it was really hard because also they told me, okay, well, you can't work anymore and uh, you can't have any more children. So I said, okay, well, I have one. It's fine. But I had to stop working. I was hospitalized for a while. Um, and it was hard to get up in the morning with that machine because I was in too much pain. So I had a, like, I had a hard time for at least two and a half years. How long have but you then, had the disease now? Well, how long have you, since you've been, been diagnosed? Seven years. Seven years. Now it's been seven years. I was diagnosed in December 2009. Um, when I was 25, now I'm 32. And uh, so with the machine, eventually the doctor told me, come back in. Uh, if you're in too much pain right now, there's a research protocol pill coming out. It's going to replace the machine for certain people like you. So I had to be stabilized on pills. And I got the pill that is called now Abtravi or Selexipag, which, is, uh, which has completely changed my life. It gave me back a quality of life. Um, I'm able to get up in the morning now and clean my house. Oh, there wow. are, yes, there are still side effects um, that are hard to live with sometimes, but I can walk, I can take care of my son, I can do um, daily stuff that most people would take for granted that they do, of course, because that's how life is, but I couldn't do them. And, and so, Judith, you could have died. I mean, the, this if yes. this disease, if pulmonary arterial hypertension is not treated, it, it leads to death usually within two to three years. Exactly. Yes. And that's why I'm trying to raise awareness, you know, because uh, again, the symptoms are so so light that it's kind of hard to get a diagnosis when you go into an emergency saying I'm short of breath people are going to say okay well uh, they're not going to have a tendency to look further yeah um do you think that's why we don't know about Because that's what blew my mind. Yes. If this is affecting up to 10,000 Can- Canadians, it could yeah. be killing them and it yes. doesn't have to be killing them. Why don't we know about it? Exactly. Well, that's exactly why um I'm going around trying to get as much uh media because it's very devastating when we see people um, a lot of people that are um, affected by this condition are women between 25 to 35 years old uh, no oftentimes way. they have young kids yes and so it is important to get a, a diagnosis uh, early on in the disease because you can be saved and live like you said a very good life when it's further down into the disease like I was it's you can't work you can't keep a normal life because you're way too sick. I have a pacemaker since I'm 26 as well. So, like, my my road to recovery was really, really long, and it was with a lot of ups and downs. And But I'm very thankful that I had access to this medication because it completely changed everything for yeah. me. Well, and you're alive, and you're able to take care of your son. I mean, that is, that's... How, so that how, old's your, how old's your child now? Right now, he's 11. He's wow. growing up beautifully. Um, he understands that I'm sick sometimes, but it's not as bad as it used to be. So he sees me differently now because I'm not always in pain. I'm not always um, uh, at the verge of crying because of the pain. I'm getting up in the morning. Um, so it changed a lot for for my family life. Well, and he uh, sees you helping to spread the word and make sure that other sons don't lose their mothers due to yes. due to this. Thank you so much, Judith, yeah. for helping to spread the word. Thank you. All the best to you. Judith Moati is a young mom who is living with pulmonary pulmonary arterial hypertension. If you suspect you might have it, get it checked out.